Hey guys, my name is Ashley. Today we're talking about birds. This is like the continuation of the last video that I did. I'm super excited to just get this over with. Um, I'm getting a little anxious about the test, not gonna lie, but you know what? We're just gonna work for it and we're gonna pass this test. Um, I really think I should start focusing on more large animal calculation, stuff like that. If that's the case, that's probably gonna be my next video maybe on clostridium diseases for large animals. We'll see, maybe I'll do reptiles because that's also something that I don't know too much about. I focused kind of a, I think, way too much time on birds um, and their diseases, but uh, we'll see how, you know, how we go. So this video is just gonna be about different, like more common diseases that you're gonna see in birds and um, that you're most likely gonna be asked about on the Vitney, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So let's just start off with clinical signs. So things that are abnormal for birds to be doing are um, open, open beak breathing, wings out, tail bobbing, depression, feathers fluffed out at the bottom of the cage. These are all abnormal behaviors. If you, if your client see this, sees this or calls you and tells you, they most likely know. Bird people um, are usually really aware of just more abnormal behaviors with their birds. Um, but if they call into the clinic, you're talking to them and um, they say any of these things, tell them to come right in. Um, and uh, get them checked out. Candida. Uh, this you're gonna see in young um, immunocompromised patients. <music> Clinical signs are gonna be acute anorexia, um, white oropharyngeal lesions, and then on cytology, whenever you do a cytology swab, you're gonna see budding yeast on that, um, under the microscope. The way to diagnose it is by doing a culture swab and you're going to treat with topical nystatin, an antifungal vitamin A supplementation. This is usually caused secondary to antibiotic treatment, poor hygiene, environmental stress, and a vitamin A deficiency. In the last video we talked more in depth about um, their nutrition, their the husbandry, everything like that. So um, you're going to see throughout these once I start talking about like clinical signs like what you're gonna see how how these things come up you're gonna see that a lot of it has to do with hygiene or poor nutrition aspergillus aspergillus so uh, this is a respiratory disease so it's a chronic respiratory disease it's meaning that it happens over time it may lead to uh, fungal granulomas in the upper and lower respiratory tract Next, viral infection. So I focus a little bit more on these and I'm gonna be looking down a lot because I definitely don't have these memorized. So just bear with me, I have my notes. The cytosine beak and feather disease. Um, this disease is fatal. So there's no cure for it. What what you can do is um, do supportive care. The cytosine beak and feather disease, not a disease that you can disinfect. So one interesting thing, kind of like a little, when you're getting the history for birds, um, it, it can be beneficial to ask where they were bought from, especially if you're thinking that it may be cytosine, um, cytosine beak and feather because this disease cannot be um, disinfected. So generally when a pet store um, or another area that sells these birds has that disease within its facility, it's going to be there. So a lot of the birds that come from there are going to have that same disease. So the clinical signs are that you're going to see are abnormal formation of the feathers. But what you have to take into consideration is the fact that they like the first feathers when they're baby if they're born with feathers or they have their first feathers um, they're gonna be normal looking but once the first molt comes around then they're gonna have blunted blunted feathers so they're gonna be that blunted they're going to either fall out they're not gonna be even growing in some areas so that's very abnormal that's something that you want to look at and this is also um, obviously most common that you're gonna see it in younger in birds less than three years old. You're initially gonna see the feathers come in blunted or abnormal feathers, and then you're going to see immunosuppression. They often die from secondary infection. Uh, the way you diagnose this is by doing a PCR blood test. So then, so with that being said, they're gonna come in, um, get tested for this. They may have positive result, but they may be building like a, an immune to it. So it's 
it's possible for them to get it and then um, fight it off and then be okay later on but sometimes they do become so affected that it becomes immunosuppression so what you're testing for is to see that if they have the um, if they have the virus, if it comes out positive, what you're going to do is wait three months and then retest at that point. If that at that point they are positive for this disease, then they it, it's going to be bad because they usually die really quickly after that. They can also do biopsy PCR tests on blood, feathers, dander, and feces. For this, like I said, because it's not it's you're not able to disinfect it if you are. If a client calls and says, oh, I think my bird has this, whatever the case, and your veterinarian um, can tr can help with that or you guys can test for it, it may be better to just have your veterinarian go outside or you go outside to the car and do the physical and everything on the bird. Obviously, that's not an option sometimes, but it may be something to consider because it's not something that you can really disinfect from the from the environment. Poliomavirus disease, this also affects young birds and there's two types. So there's Bajeri, there's the, oh my goodness, I can't say this. A G fledgling disease, I cannot really say Bajerian, so that's what we're gonna stick with. And the non-polyoma infection. Um, you're gonna see sudden death in pre-weaned neonates. Uh, lethargy, crop stasis, death within 24 to 48 hours, hematuria, melina, green urate. Surviving fledglings have feather dystrophy. Luckily, there's a vaccine for this. The birds have to be greater than 35 days, and uh, the vaccine is given in a two-part like series. So you give it 35 days, and then in two weeks you give the second the second dose. The Pacheco's disease. So Pacheco's disease is a cytosine herpes virus. That's a causative agent. Is cytosine herpes virus. This is a causative agent. You're going to see it in um, parrots, conures, and macaws. And this can be stress induced. So, uh, clinically healthy birds can shed the disease. You're going to see fecal contamination in food, water bowl. This can also be in the air, so aerosol and direct contact is how you get it. Incubation period is from three to 14 days, so three days to two weeks. And then treatment is supportive care. You're going to see in. Um, in a bird that has this in their blood work, so elevated plasma AST and marked uh, leukopenia, so uh, low white blood cells. You're gonna physically see anorexia, depression, and this also may cause death. What the owner may call in and say is that they are noticing blood in the feces. The zoonotic diseases, you'll have a chlamydophilia, cytopsychosis. So this is a bacterial respiratory disease. This is transmission through inhalation, so that's kind of scary. Or ingestion of spore-like phase organisms. The incubation period is three days to a few weeks. This is also excreted feces, nasal, ocular discharge. So what you're going to see in the bird is weight loss, lethargy, anorexia, also lime green urates, and respiratory signs. So you can treat this one with doxycycline. It has to be for 45 days. Also, dietary calcium should be reduced. I think that affects the way that the um, doxycycline is absorbed. Exotic Newcastle disease. So this is transmission through direct contact with viral particles from aerosol bodily fluids. So a lot of these are in the air, they're very hard to disinfect, They or you cannot disinfect them. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, so um, they're going to present with acute respiratory disease. Uh, prominent clinical form is depression, nervous manifestation, and diarrhea. So humans can get it and can result in sinus sinusitis, um, lethargy, and conjunctivitis. So. West Nile virus. This is transmitted through um, West Nile. That just sounds like a mosquito disease. So, and it causes neurological disease in animals and people. This is what it says: zoonotic. So, chlamydophilia, cytos or cytopsychosis, exotic Newcastle disease, and West Nile virus are all zoonotic diseases. So, avian influenza. So, wild birds are the natural hosts of avian influenza A different subtypes of 
avian influenza or influenza A have affected people or infected people. Dangerous subtypes identified as HA or H and H7 and can have flu-like symptoms um, and death in people and animals. That's another also another um, zoonotic disease. So the parasites are going to be, the parasites that I'm going to talk about are um, like mites and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into tapeworms or anything like that because like tapeworms, drownworms, stuff like that because that's more general and we'll talk about that in a different video. But for um, this video, I have to look down because I cannot pronounce this for the life of me, but Nemidocoptes, Nemidocoptes pilae. So you're going to see a honeycomb-like appearance on their beaks um, and then you're going to see scaly feet and legs, kind of gross. So you're going to give oral or injectable ivermectin to treat that. Um, I think it come, you do it in two doses, plasmodium, this is the avian, avian, avian malaria and that one is transmitted by, because malaria, come on, so that one's transmitted by mosquitoes. It is an intraerythrocytic parasite. The animals are going to be asymptomatic, so they're not going to show any signs of this, but it may cause hemolytic anemia, and you're going to treat with chloroquine. Next is trichomonas. And this causes white plaque, but it's more common in wild birds, raptors, and pigeons. There's also, you're going to also have a swollen most likely see a swollen crop. Next, proventricular dilation syndrome. So this is PDS or PDD or a macaw wasting disease. So the clinical signs that you're gonna see in that is weight loss, regurgitation, polyuria, neuroscience, and gastrointestinal dysfunction. And this is associated with born virus. So last but not least, Giardia. So that is something that's also common in um, small animals, large animals, like any type of animal really um, can get Giardia. And that's like a trophocyte. Uh, so that leads to pluck. Giardia can often lead to plucking in birds. Um, you can diagnose with just a fresh wet mount, kind of how you could di diagnose it with um, like a, one of your small animals um, or a PCR swab. And uh, you're going to get chronic and intermediate diarrhea. And Giardia can cause uh, dry skin and itchiness, lethargy, and poor appetite. So I ran through that super fast, I, th I think personally, uh, but these are just like the common diseases that you're probably going to see on your vitney. Hopefully this video gave you, you know, something to listen to, um, to kind of help you memorize which ones get what as far as treatment or as far as like clinical signs of what you're going to see. But with that being said, that's it for today. Hopefully I learned some large animal stuff and by Friday, I'm hoping by Friday, I have another video up for you guys. So see you next time.